Welcome back to Education Matters. Did you correctly answer D? Last year, only 50 of the state's 115 school districts met the recommended one nurse for every 750 students. Now we're going to continue our discussion about education and policy with two great journalists who have been actively covering the many issues we discuss every week on the show, including what we just talked about with Bob Orr. They are Colin Campbell. Colin is the editor of the North Carolina Insider, a must read for those who care about policy and politics in North Carolina. And next to him is Liz Schlimmer. Liz is an education reporter with WUNC Radio. So thank you both for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank um, all right, Colin, I'm going to start with you. you because you, you kind of look at some of these sort of broader political and process things in your work. Um, is this, is this short session, has this been strange? I mean, I mean, as far as the, the budget process, how it, I mean, is it unusual in sort of historical terms? You know, there's always been a history, both under Republican leadership and Democratic leadership in the past, of things towards the end of session getting a little bit hectic, a lot of the transparency uh, approaches going out the window. You see bills that uh, change forms with very little notice to the public. Uh, but I think this year has perhaps gone a step farther than we have in the past. Some of that is uh, just a function of them trying to keep the session really short. They're trying to uh, adjourn by the end of June. They only came in in the middle of May, uh, and there's a lot to do in part because uh, Republicans, I think, recognize that uh, they may or may not have a supermajority when they come back next year, depending on how this year's election goes. So the result is you saw a budget process that was fast-tracked in a way we've never actually yeah, you're seen saying, before. That one, that one, I mean, the, the bill's being stripped and replaced, and, and I mean, that's kind of... Yeah, that's pretty standard, that's kind of, yeah. But the budget, it was Memorial Day week, budget came out first time, it was a conference report, so basically just the Republican uh, member, caucus members had seen it Monday night, and then it was voted on, I think, the next afternoon, and by the end of the week, it was over. Yeah, and there was no opportunity for no uh, legislators to amend things, which is, I think, the best example of uh, the problems you had with that was the donors choose issue, where State Senator Jeff Tart right. had put in some money uh, to direct through the organization Donors Choose, which allows teachers to do crowdfunding campaigns online, uh, and wanted them to distribute it to schools, but just in his district in Mecklenburg County. Uh, uh, the budget came out, and soon we heard from Donors Choose, who said, we've never heard about this. We were not consulted about this, and in fact, we can't support that because that's not how our organization works. Right. And so that ultimately had to be pulled out of the budget through a technical corrections bill later on. Uh, but that's the sort of thing that, had you made the budget public earlier in the process, uh, could have been dealt with pretty easily without it becoming a big news story and a, a PR fail for Senator Tart. Right. All right. Well, Liz, you cover education exclusively for WNC Radio. Now, Obviously, with, with the, the format of radio, you're not necessarily having to do something every day, but this must have been a little bit challenging session to try to keep up with all the moving parts. Right. This was my first legislative session that I've covered, so I learned a lot uh, going through that and also you know, saw some bills that uh, came up and ultimately did not happen. Yeah, that was actually one of the things you and I were chatting about before we started taping, and we mentioned in our headlines, you had a piece um, just last week on, on, um, on the radio about the school psychologist. Um, there was a lot of activity around that in the school safety discussion, but you, you did some reporting on basically nothing moved, right? Right, so North Carolina doesn't have enough school psychologists. There are 75 vacancies across the state and school psychologists are serving on average about 2,000 students per psychologist, and that's far beyond the recommended ratios. And this is something that the House Select Committee on School Safety talked about a lot, and several bills were filed. And one of those that got the most traction was a bill that would uh, streamline the process for hiring school psychologists that have a national board certification that would especially make it easier for hiring school psychologists who are trained in other states. Right. It was very popular in the House. It passed unanimously in its early readings. And then the Senate tacked on an unrelated health care provision that was very controversial. And it ultimately killed that bill. And so, you know, we haven't seen any measures that would actually address that shortage of school psychologists. No. How do you all decide, like, on this story, and Colin, and then uh, to you, how do you decide what to cover because to me you know, like you know in my my the rest of my life working for a nonprofit sense that we we want people to care about things or say these are important issues even though they're not getting a lot of attention do you look at it and say this is something the public should know about 
um, and it's not getting covered, so I'm going to? Is that one, one of your filters? Yeah, there's definitely a level of that. Um, and then there's also, you have to consider, is this something people are going to care about? Can you uh, prove to them that this is going to affect your life or your kids' lives? Um, and, and that's sort of something we have to consider. So sometimes there's some fairly impactful things that are uh, that get overlooked in a session, particularly as hectic a one as we've had here. Uh, and they may be important, but we have a hard time figuring out how can we make people care about this right now? And oftentimes those get overshadowed by the more salacious issues that come out of uh, the legislature. And of course, that's one of the knocks on media overall is that everything just kind of, you cover, sort of things, the controversies are what's covered. I mean, does, did, what do you think the public misses, and in, in, in specifically in education? I mean, what, what do they miss that if they're you know, um, uh, sort of casually paying attention? Well, we try to cover ongoing issues, so things like that school psychologist issue, you know, I was looking at it over time, watching it develop, and then to show in the end what happened with it. So we, you know, we are trying to look at things long term. Um, but there are some things that are interesting, but maybe don't have impact for our listeners in this area. Things like there was a law that was passed that helps with licensing teachers who are teaching the Cherokee language out in Western North Carolina. That's a very interesting little piece, but we knew that it wasn't going to have a direct impact for listeners in this area, so that might be something that I'll pick up in a feature later, but didn't get as much coverage when it became law. Right. So we've probably got a few, just a few days left. In fact, by the time this show airs on Saturday, we may be completely done or close to it. I mean, what, what, what's going to happen this week? We've got as many as six constitutional amendments um, uh, on the ballot. Yeah, and there's several that have some interesting implications. I think the one that uh, uh, hopefully by the time this airs, people will know whether it passed or not, but uh, was having some turmoil in the House is that income tax cap essentially preventing future legislatures from increasing the income tax. That has had a lot of concerns of uh, people in the uh, education community worried that uh, if schools are facing a shortfall, will the state be able to have a way to uh, grow that revenue and avoid uh, some pretty painful cuts to the school system? Uh, another uh, issue is all the veto overrides. The governor has vetoed seven bills, uh, ranging from things involving early voting uh, to uh, the farm bill. Uh, there's an interesting provision in that, that uh, in a different bill that involves bond forfeitures. Uh, that's when you uh, don't show up to court, uh, you're bond money goes away, and that usually goes to education, uh, but there's a bill that uh, would make it easier for bail bondsmen to get that money back, depending oh, so on the circumstance. I, there's yeah. the, I mean, that's yeah. one I missed. Governor so vetoed it. I, I think there's some concerns from schools about the funding implications right. of that, but it's one that uh, most people didn't catch when it was coming through the first time. Well, look, well, you're going to help. You both of you help us catch a lot of things, and we appreciate <laughs> you coming on the show this week to talk about it more, and we hope you'll come back. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. After the break, this week's Leadership Spotlight. <laughs> 